Welcome to Acetify version 3 and here is everything that is new in this ultimate bacon export tool. First of all, the user interface may look a little bit different and that is because I used a new categorization system. It should be easier to read and also easier to follow top to bottom. I added some features for UV unwrapping as well as baking. First of all, there's a new map that we can bake which is the ambient occlusion, very important, and with that also comes an ability to pack your ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic, they're all black and white masks, into one texture, right, that is called basically the OR arm texture, and we can pack that and it will combine it into the red, green, blue channels into one texture that you can use then into other softwares as well, some game engines use it and it's very efficient, right, in terms of performance, and um, we also have now the ability to bake into open EXR format um, next to PNG, and that means that, well, open EXR uses 32 bits, which means we can get slightly more detail as well. Now we can also adjust the UV margin setting now, right? Previously I had some comments that the UV islands were too close together when it were, was packed by a set of I, and especially in lower resolution bakes. So I now added the setting to change the kind of spacing, right? The margins between two islands. You can increase that so they become um, a lot more separated and they won't overlap. Now we can also unwrap and bake, and this is a big one, UDIMs, right? So that means that you can just set how many UDIMs you want in the Acetify interface, for example, two or three, and you can then just um, unwrap and bake it into, well, that specified amount of UDIM tiles, right? All you need to do is set the amount and it will take care of the rest in baking, and it will even re-import it when it's done with the baking baking to, well, show if it looks proper or not. And that also happens with the overarm, by the way, the packed texture is automatically imported back into your shading as well. So you can check out how your material looks with that packed texture as well. Now there's also been some additional functionalities, right? Um, we can automatically set the origin point of an object to the center bottom, right? So that is something that happens a lot with a lot of props, right? That you place on things and um, they need a center origin at the bottom of the object so it can be placed on the ground or whatever. So that is now an automatic option as well so you don't have to find that origin yourself or anything. Now you can also create LODs with a set of I, up to four that is included the original mesh, right? So you have the original mesh, you can create the first LOD, the second and the third. It will automatically name your original to LOD zero as well if you check that option. And that means that it will count as your original LOD, right? So you can set the kind of resolution that you want your LOD to be at for every LOD. Um, so you can, for example, split the first into half the geometry, the second into 25% and the third into 5% maybe, right? Um, now, together with that, we also can create collider objects, collision objects, right? So just some general shape and it uses primarily a con convex hull with a little bit of additional um, cleaning up and merging um, of two closed verts. So you can create a quick collider as well. You don't have to set that up yourself. Now, together with the new features, I also made a lot of fixes. Um, obviously, we are now in Blender 5.0, which means that I had to tweak the add-on a little bit as well to fit Blender 5.0 perfectly. Um, I also fixed a little bit of UV overlapping with that margin setting. I updated the mix shader setup, right? If you have a mix shader setup with diffuse BSDF, principal BSDF, things that mix together into your material output, you can enable that function and it will, it will try to bake it the best it can. You will actually get a nice result. Um, I tweaked a bit in there as well. There were some occasions where it wouldn't work perfectly. So I tweaked it and it should be more robust now. I also fixed an issue where your metallic map sometimes turns into a black output, right, which is not what you want. So I fixed the progress bar that didn't always disappear at the end of the baking sequence. I fixed a normal map bake turning out um, inconsistent due to denoising, um, which is not really what you want. And I also fixed some face setting and um, other shading artifact issues 
by adding it that shade smooth functionality, right? Force shade smooth will kind of create a temporary baking object with all your custom normal cleared, which is kind of what you want during your normal map baking, right? You just want your normal data um, and not really your custom normal splits. So just check that box if you want to bake it with the smooth normals and just leave it off if you don't. It's a simple switch. That was in general the update list for a Setify 3.0. Now let me just showcase these changes quickly and go over the new UI so you know what's going on there. So I'm just using this as a nice test model. It's not mine, it's made by someone else, namely by Arman, right? Very cool model. And I picked this to really just test out the features of a Setify. There's a lot of objects here with different textures and these objects also use weighted normals, right? So that is kind of custom normals. Um, that would previously interfere with the bake a little bit. So I wanted to test that, fix that, created a kind of solution for it as well. Um, and we're just going to test it out with this model. Quite cool. So I'm going to open up my panel here, a Setify, and immediately you may notice that it looks different, right? There is icons and there's more kind of categories as well. Now, um, the first really just remains the same, right? Processing your assets. This is where you start off. Really think about this as a sequence that you go from top to bottom um, as it was before as well. So opening up the processing assets, we just hit the plus to add a new collection. So now we have the Rusty Surveillance bot in here and we can process the assets. Process and you can now see that it's also kind of processing it in real time, right? It will add models by models by models until your actually actual model is created, right? Um, so we're going to collapse this because once it's processed, it is part of the Assetify system and it is now part of the list. We have the collection, we have the assets, so there's a lot of assets in this robot model, right? So you can tell here. <laughs> um, so we can just go by collection in this case, which is just one collection, the Rusty Surveillance Bot. So first things first, I want to bake the entire thing as one texture, right? So I don't want every model to have its own texture. So by default, I'm going to join this up as one object. Now, previously, there may also have been some issues um, with the UV maps, right? So this object has two UV maps and they all have two UV maps. And some of them use the UV map and some of them use the auto map. So a set of version three is able to detect the active UV for every single object that will make sure that that's actually going to be used when it's a joint object as well. And that only one UV map remains with the proper UV maps for each and every single individual object. So let's go to utilities uh, because this is now the section where that happens, right? Previously it was under the process assets but I just left the refreshing of the list and the deletion of selected kind of objects collections here, something that just belongs to the processing of the assets, right, the assets list. Now the utilities is something that's just a little bit of an extra to the kind of bake and export settings, right? Because we can now join our assets, right, with the collection selected in the list. We can then join our assets, give it a name, maybe robot, and hit OK and it will join it into one object, right? And we end up with one UV map as you can see here. And if I open up a UV window here, we have one UV map as well. It's not completely clean, but we're going to re UV unwrap this anyway in the sequence here because we also don't want any overlap because we bake this as one object. So let's just now check out the pivot to bottom as well, right? Our pivot point is not really located properly, right? If this would be an asset that you would place somewhere in your 3D environment, you would want this to be somewhere at the bottom, right? And that means that we can just click on the set pivot to bottom. It's going to calculate pretty much the center point of your object um, and the lowest point, and it's going to place the origin there, right? So that is beautiful and easy. That's pretty much it, right? I'm going to collapse this and then we're going to proceed to baking of our assets, right? And if we open this up, we have first of all the still and animation tab. It's the same as before, but for the still, we can open up the extra map bakes and we see a new map, the ambient occlusion that we can now enable and disable, right? Alongside the other maps that were already there. So let's collapse this and open up the general settings, right? And this is where the rest of the magic happens. So top to bot, we now have 
PNG Open EXR, right? We can switch between the two and we can select the resolution just like before, the samples. Um, and then we have the pipeline kind of setting where we have some new options, right? Platform, Unreal Engine, Unity. Um, but we can, of course, enable the mix shader setup. I renamed this from non-principled BSDF baking to mix shader setup. I think it makes more sense, right? You all know what, what we mean if we have a mix shader setup. It uses something else than just one principled BSDF shader. Um, enable that if that is the case. For me, um, I don't think this one has it. So we're just going to try the normal baking. Now we have force smooth normal. So this model has a lot of weighted normals, right? So the objects, we can check them out. There's always a backup of your original objects. Um, there is weighted normals. And that means that there's some kind of custom normals going on. Um, that gave me issues with the bake previously. It would give, for example, some hard splits at edges of your geometry, which is really not what I want. Right, so we're going to just force the smooth normals for the baking. Don't worry, it's not going to mess up anything of your actual 3D model because this means that we're also going to be baking on a proxy object, right? A temporary object that we can manipulate to do whatever we want to in order to force this kind of smooth baking result. So let me hide that collection. And then we also have a pack ORM system. I already explained it in the kind of intro here. It means that we're packing the ambient occlusion, the roughness, and the metallic maps into one texture in the RGB channels. It is going to save us efficiency wise a lot of space right because we're not baking individual textures for the ambient occlusion one for the roughness two and for the metallic three but it's going to bake all of them separately and pack them into one texture that we can then use right um so i'm gonna enable that as well just to showcase it a little bit and then we have the uv unwrap which is now a toggle right we can enable or disable it if you already have great uvs on your object and you want to just bake them to your own uvs just leave this off. If you have this enabled, it's going to UV unwrap. And now we have a UV margin setting as well, right? Um, there may have been some overlap issues if you bake this as 512 or 1000, right? I get some comments. So now we can set this to, for example, 0 0.01 or 0 0.005, whatever you need for your model. So I just can set that manually. And then we also have the UDIM setting, right? Let's say this is an object with a lot of parts. There's a lot of UVs here. And let's say it's not going to fit one UV, right? Happens a lot. Then we can just use UDIMs. We can set this to two or three or four, five, whatever. And it's just going to, during our bake process, it will add that extra tile. And it will add that during the UV unwrapping section of the bake function, which means that first it will just add that tile. It will unwrap it and pack it into two tiles. And then it will bake it into the two tiles as well. Save it as well. And then it will even apply those textures with the UDIMs to your final model, right? So you can exactly see what's going on once you bake this. So use UDIMs to you and then we're ready for bake, right? GPU is what I'm going to use. Bake, save and proceed. Every time you do something crazy in your um, in your file, right? In a setify, baking, exporting, processing, whatever, and your file is not saved for a while, it will make you safe, right? Because saving is safe. So save and proceed. You'll see a little progress bar up here. I'm baking 1K on two UDIM, so it is going to take a few seconds, but shouldn't be too long. You can actually see in real time those UVs here being created with our UV margins set up properly as well. So it's already done. We go to render view. We see how it looks and it's just our robot, right? So did it even bake? Well, let's just go to the shader editor and we can see that we now have three textures for our robot and it looks perfect, right? It looks amazing. A little bit low res, maybe we still bake in 1K, right? This entire object, um, but the colors and metallic values, whatever, the roughness, it all looks great. And well, let's just see what this does, right? The base color, perfect. We have the ORM, right? The um, combined AO roughness and metallic with a separate color. Yes, it applies everything. So you can tell what it looks like at the very end. Um, let's just look. This is the ambient um, occlusion. It looks like it's not there, um, but it is. And I actually set it up to automatically multiply with our diffuse texture. It if I now add a color ramp here in between, crank the black values a bit more to the right. 
Um, and let's visualize that Control shift click we can see that we're actually having a nice emit occlusion texture packed within that OR arm texture right so let's just visualize the principal BSDF right so you can just play around with that ambient occlusion to really add a little bit more of that darker values for example to your model as well right beautiful and of course our normal map I baked it smooth which means that um well it is going to be smooth there's not going to be any edges no matter how strong we make this normal map right there's not going to be kind of those lines on our um on our rounded surfaces that was mostly the issue here it will all be smooth right now this is quite harsh we may not need that much <laughs> so maybe one is fine or two you know um and of course all dependent on the resolution of your texture. Now, this is not just it, right? Because we can collapse this menu and just move on to the next, which is LOD and Collider Manager. Open it up and you can see a few basic settings, right? We can enable LOD 1, 2, and 3 with the ratio as well, right? Um, which means that this is going to end up with 50% of the geometry, this 25, and this is, well, 5, 5%. And then we can generate LODs, right? So let's see how detailed our geometry is. It's not too bad. And we can generate LODs. Just click on the button. There we go. Wait a few seconds and LODs created. Now, if you enable this checkbox, it will rename it as well, the original model to LOD0, which is usually what you want, right? Um, and let's just see how it looks, right? Let's just start with LOD0. Well, it's the default object. So that looks like this. Um, let's hide it. Let's go to the second one, right? It looks more kind of, well, more low detail. And the 5% one is even a lower detail, right? There is a total of 4,000 vertices in this one. And in the original one, let's see how many there is. There is 74,000. So it is quite a lot. And it's still, let's go to render view, looks kind of great, right? It's still that robot model looking very nice right so from a distance you can't even tell that this is a lower resolution model right which it really is so that is a beautiful it's all placed in the same collection as well by the way which means that if we would export this and let's just get all of them in here if we would export that collection which is still selected in the list and we would export all these objects together now, the final object that we can add is a collider object, right? Which is going to create, a, well, a smooth kind of collider for this object, the best it can, right? I added some extra features that would remove some geometry that is still too close to each other, so it's trying to make it a bit more low res even. Um, but you can just press it, even if you have multiple LODs already, it will just take your first LOD and create it from that. So generate collider, and it will generate that collider object. And by default, it is going to create it with um, a wireframe visibility in Blender. Don't worry, it's still a 3D model with faces and everything, right? It's just not visible in our, in our viewport, so we have a nice kind of base collider objects now we can just export that entire collection right export fbx whatever export it it will have a nice progress bar and you're done right everything is created your entire setup is done and you're ready to take this to any other software that you want so that is in short the entire update for a set of I version 3.0 now i don't have the time to test this with hundreds of models so please if you come across any issues let me know in the discord channel is the easiest way for me to handle um, any kind of issues and errors i try to respond quite quickly and solve issues quickly as well by just pushing out a new update right a set of i can be updated in your edit preferences menu and then under the add-ons and set of i is where you can check for updates and update it. That's also how it works in, of course, updating this to version 3.0, right? But uh, whenever there is small updates, um, I won't really notify you. Just check for updates every once in a while. And if there is a major update um, that you need to have, I will, of course, notify all of you once again. So good luck with the set of file. Let me know what you think of version 3 and have a nice day. Cheers.